Well, here in, here in chapter 17, God reaffirms his covenant with Abraham. And this is the fourth time that God reaffirms his covenant with Abraham. Now, at this point, it's been 24 years since God first called Abraham to leave Ur of the Chaldees. Uh, and it's been 13 years since Ishmael was born. As we've seen in our study of the life of Abraham in Genesis, there have been a few times through the years when Abraham's faith has, has wavered a bit. Uh, understandably, 24 years, it's a long time to wait for a promise. We saw last week in chapter 16 that Sarai, Abram's wife, uh, grew impatient waiting upon the Lord to fulfill his promise. So she took matters into her own hands. She offered her servant Hagar to Abraham and that relationship produced Ishmael, produced a son. Uh, the New Testament tells us that son was a work of their flesh. It was not a work of the spirit. And Ishmael was not the son of promise, as we see in this chapter, in chapter 17. You know, God's timing is quite often different from our timing, isn't it? You know, we, we, uh, we don't like waiting. We certainly don't like waiting 24 years. 24 hours, maybe, but not 24 years. Now, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 says, listen, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. And for most of us, the patience, that's the hard part. We're not weak in faith. We believe God. We're weak in patience for most of us. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 15, it says, After waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. After waiting patiently for 24 years, Abraham received what was promised. Now, one reason... One reason God waited so long was so that there would be no question that this child was a miracle of God and, and, and not just a marvel of nature. So that there would be no doubt. So that everybody would say, God is the only explanation. God is the only reason God did this. And, and sometimes God will do things in such a way that he gets all the glory. And there's no question. This is God. This is only God. That's the only explanation for this. He likes to do things in that way. And that's what he does here with Abraham and Sarah and their child, Isaac, this child of promise. Now, in, in this chapter, God uses the phrase, my covenant nine times, and he uses the phrase, I will, ten times. So this is something God is doing for Abraham and for his, his de descendants. And, and Abraham uh, you know, is the benefactor of God's blessings, just as we are the benefactors of God's blessings in our own lives. You know, God is the one who pursued us. God is the one who sought us out. God is the one who, who called us out. Of our old life, God is the one who redeemed us and transformed us and gave us new life. God, God is the initiator. And, and we are the benefactors of, of what God is doing in us and through us. In verse 1 again, it, it, it says, When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me. And be blameless. Now, if you, if you just look back one verse, the end of chapter 16, it says Abram was 86 years old when, he was, when Ishmael was born. So now he's 99 years old. Again, 13 years have, have passed since Ishmael was born. And I'd imagine at this point for Abraham, he thought Ishmael is the promised son. He has this son with Hagar and 
13 years go by, and, and I'm sure for him, he, he's, he's thinking, well, this must be the promised son. But he's not. As we see in this chapter, God will give Abraham and his wife Sarah a son. God appears here to announce this to him in chapter 17. And God says to Abram, I am Almighty God. Now you should underline that in your Bible. I am Almighty God. The, the Hebrew is El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Maybe you remember some of the old worship songs about El Shaddai. This is the first time in the Bible God is called El Shaddai. Almighty God. El Shaddai is used a total of 48 times in the Old Testament. And, and the name El Shaddai emphasizes God's power, God's ability, and God's sufficiency. And why does God call himself El Shaddai? Why does God call himself Almighty God? Why does he emphasize his power, his ability, and his sufficiency to Abraham now at this point for the first time? Why does he say that now? Because Abraham is 99 years old and his wife is 89 years old and God is about to tell them they will have a child together at their age. And listen to what it says in Romans chapter 4. You don't have to turn there, but listen, just listen to what it says about Abram, Abraham, and Sarah. Romans chapter 4, verse 19. It says that Abraham was not weak in faith. He did, listen, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being, listen, fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Abram's body was already dead. Sarah's womb was already dead. And in other words, they, they were too old to have kids physically. Uh, they, they couldn't do what was necessary to make a baby at their age. It wasn't possible. And so God is about to do something in them and through them that is physically impossible for Abraham and Sarah to do at their age. That's why God begins the conversation by saying, I am almighty God. I am El Shaddai. Before I tell you what I'm about to tell you, let me just tell you, I am Almighty God. Before we go any further. And maybe for you, you're facing an impossible situation. It seems hopeless. You don't see how it could ever possibly work out. Our God is El Shaddai. Our God is almighty God. God is not limited by our limitations, whether that be a physical limitation like Abraham and Sarah, or whether that be a material limitation or a financial limitation or an emotional limitation or whatever it may be. He's not limited by your age or your gender or your education level or anything else. Nothing limits him. Nothing is too hard for our God. With our God, all things are possible. And it's important for us to remember that so that we don't limit God with our unbelief. Like Abraham, we should be fully convinced that what God has promised, He is able to do. Why? Because He's El Shaddai. He's Almighty God. You know, Romans chapter 8, verse 11 says, that, listen, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that resurrection power, dwells in us as believers. And so God begins here by saying, I am Almighty God. And then He says, walk before me and be blameless. Walk before me. That speaks of Abram's manner of life. The idea here is live in my present wa presence, walk in my presence, Walk before my face, literally, and be blameless. Now, when it says be blameless, it doesn't mean be sinless. It's impossible for anyone to be sinless. We all, we all sin. We all fall short. So what is it saying here? To be blameless means to be upright toward God 
or to be without spot, without blemish toward God. In other words, God wanted all of Abraham. He wanted a, a full commitment in the way that he lives. And God has the same message for us today. Walk before me and be blameless. We, sh- we should live in the presence of God. We should always be mindful of God's presence in our lives and that God sees all. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, nothing is hidden from God's sight. We should live with a constant awareness that God sees all that we're doing. He sees all of our behavior. Everything that we do is done in His sight. Some people compartmentalize God. Where God is in their minds is only, only present in parts of, their, uh, parts of their life. You know, God is present with me when I go to church on Sunday. God is present with me when I pray before a meal. God is present with me when I'm reading my Bible. But God is not present with me when I go to work or when I watch something on television or what I do on Friday night. And they put God in a compartment. He's in some parts of my life, but he's not in these other parts of my life. God is present for all of life, not just parts of it. And that should affect our behavior. God wants us to be blameless. He wants us to be fully committed to him. He wants us to be upright in our relationship with him. God said to Abram, walk before me and be blameless. 